Okay. So, since we're all dolled up, we're going to do one last video. And we're just going to have a general chat. Yeah. Just yeah. about how we feel about it. Okay. Oh, the first impressions. Hatchet is amazing. They have an entire wall made out of books saying read. Yeah. Which, yeah, they don't need to tell me to read, but it's there. And while we're standing there waiting for them to open the doors and say, look, uh, we're going, read that, read that. Have heard you read good, that? Heard good things that? about that. Yeah, yeah. Especially as part of Ridley Island. Um, I'll add pictures in periodically. So. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, we walked into the room and it was, well, we could smell popcorn before we went into the room. That's true. And the popcorn was just, oh, it smelled yeah. delicious. Oh. When we got into the room, we saw the cupcakes. They were cupcakes. They were oh, cupcakes. I still have one. Hang on. I haven't eaten it yet. I ate my cupcake. It matches our coffee mug. Okay, it says, date a book. And mine has a hair on it, so Again, I'm gonna... they don't really need to tell us to do that. We do yeah, it anyway, yeah. so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. He needs a boyfriend when you've got a book. <laughs> Um, but yeah, also just a shout out to all the staff at Hashit. They are absolutely amazing. Yes, we love you, um, Ashley. Thank you. And Kim. Ashley is awesome. Kim is also amazing. Yeah. Really, really passionate. Love their books. Um, but also great, great hosts. So it was pretty good. Pretty damn good. It was, like, last year was epic. This we time... didn't think that last year could be topped. Yeah, they did it. And it sort of looked it. effortless. And, and I love that Ashley goes... Did you notice what we got for you? They bought a fan. Because I was just about dying from the heat last year. <laughs> <laughs> and it was still warm today, this year. I think there were more people there this year. And they were. it was pretty amazing. Um, including a baby, which is really nice to see that they're actually including people who maybe have small children. Getting them in there young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they know their stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, but just... Really, really good to see everyone there. Um, really good to see that it's expanding and that everyone's really, really passionate about it. You know what I love this year? Last year, I reckon we were the oldest people in the room. Oh, were No, we weren't. Yeah, I felt like we were. <laughs> this year, we weren't. It's like, yeah. yeah. It felt good. <laughs> you no. weren't looking. You weren't looking. I, I, I felt like she's, I was like a right. decrepit old lady last year because <laughs> everyone was so young. It's like, I know we're supposed to be young adult bloggers, but that doesn't mean we necessarily have to be young adults, right? <laughs> um, yeah, very possibly right. Okay, and our Yarrow, probably something we should look into. So, who... Yeah, let me get mine. I've still got mine. It's in my pocket. Let me just jump out of shot. Ha 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 ha! I'm going to get mine too. Okay. So it's like a tarot reading, but the deck had like different things. So we had YA boyfriend, oh, obviously. YA best friend, where we live, in a. So which place? Who's your YA boyfriend? My YA boyfriend was Graham from the Jennifer E. Smith book. Now let me try and figure this out because I didn't write the actual title. Um, what was it? I can't remember. I'll add it in the thing. I'll, I'll write it here. <laughs> something, something, happiness. Happiness. This is what happiness looks, looks like. like. There we go. Yay! We figured it out. So how do you feel about him being your boyfriend? That's okay. That's okay. I really I like that book. It was awesome. Okay. I got Parker from Vanishing Girls. Have not read it yet. Have not met him. I'm hoping he's okay. Oh, no. He starts blaming people from what we hear. That's okay as long as he's blaming the right people. Yeah. All Let right. him be intelligent. Please. Who is cool. your YA best friend? I got Jin from The Walled City. So which we're both reading in the next... I think it's the next one. Next month? Next two months? So we're going to meet this person at that point and yeah. figure out if they're actually a good best friend for Belle. Mm. Okay. Your YA best friend? Lila from White Cat, which is pretty much the best friend in the entire world. <laughs> apart from the fact that she would probably find me really, really dull, but she could give me amazing dreams, so I don't Dude, you're not dull. You're <laughs> She's like half my age. Okay, so then we found out that we're neighbours, because we both live in Eretz. We do. Yeah. Uh, which is obviously in the world of... Daughter of Smoke and Bone. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so I live in an amusement park. Which is out of the world of... I can't remember. Park. Yeah. 
Okay. I believe it's Vanishing Girls as well, to be honest. I think so. Yeah, you had a few Vanishing Girl ones. Yeah, yeah that's right, because we're going, well, we know what you're so, supposed so to be. So you guys know there is an amusement park in Vanishing Girls. Apparently. And <sighs> all the people who know me, where the hell would I not want to ever, ever, ever freaking live? A haunted house. And I got the one from Anna dressed in blood. Of all places. No! So much writhing bodies, blood coming through the walls, creeping no. out of stuff every single day. No. Could I never keep that place clean. <laughs> Um, so our secret occupations are the last thing on the list. Uh-huh. How'd you go? Uh, just to stick with the theme of things that I would probably never ever freaking do, I got Resurrectionist from the Dawn of Smoke and Bone series. And I got a Tudor from the Duff, which is pretty much exactly in line with my dorkiness in general. You have a dork? You're awesome! <laughs> Everyone who reads is a dork. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would probably be happy with that, at least I'm not raising dead things. Yeah. So yeah, that's pretty much our Yarrow. Um, pretty exciting, apart from the food, probably the most exciting thing is that, well, no, then comes Holly Black. We have to talk yeah, about yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Holly Black is pretty damn awesome. She was pretty amazing. How much does she look like Tinkerbell to you? Oh yeah. She had the beautiful Tinkerbell face. She does, very, very elfin. Yes. Um, but also really intelligent, really well spoken, and so, so, so knowledgeable about everything to do with creepy, creepy fairies. Mm-hmm. Which is amazing. And she told a couple of stories. Oh, should we repeat oh, those stories? No. It is late at night. No. Let's not do that. I need to sleep at some <laughs> stage. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, don't mind the rope works outside. Yeah. Don't um, let the other thing keep me awake tonight. <laughs> yeah, you in a different hotel this time. <laughs> yeah, I managed to avoid that in time, yes. Accidentally. Yeah, you did last year too. <laughs> oh, my life. Um, so yeah, just apart from that, Sydney weather has been pretty amazing. Shouldn't probably talk about the weather, but it's probably better than Brisbane, I won't lie. Um, mm, I don't know. I got to see the Sydney Harbour Bridge and the Opera House from the train when I came oh, in. That's pretty awesome. Circular Quay has its own train station and it like goes right past there. And I grabbed my camera out and everyone was like looking at me weird. And then all of a sudden everyone was like, Oh, it must be okay to do that. So the creepy dude beside me is like, <laughs> with his phone, and grabs like three quick shots. But he got better shots than me because he waited until we were taking off again. Aww. And it's like, so I have a photo which I'll add here, which is a pretty lame photo, but. Either way, it still counts. <laughs> um, I think so far I haven't really gotten any photos. I think I've got one photo of me with Holly Black, which probably makes me look like a stalker. The thing that I noticed last time, because the last time I was here I was really, really sick. This time I'm only a little bit sick. Um, there are no freaking chairs in Sydney. Hmm. Where do they put all the chairs? Did they send them all to Brisbane? They must have. The worst part is there's tons and tons of taxis, but I have no idea how to make them stop for me. Well, it's not like New York where you just go, eh. Well, there's no places for them to park without something running up the back of them, so... And there's a lot of no parking zones. Yeah. Mm. Sydney is a pretty difficult place to navigate. I don't know. I'm going to go and see if I can find Martin Place in the morning. Mm. I'm going to go on and stalk Sunrise. See if I can call my daughter before she goes to school. Hey, I'm on TV! Because <laughs> I know my mum doesn't watch commercial TV, so it's like, Hi, daughter! Instead of, <laughs> hi, mum! So yeah, I'll be that person. Hmm. I'm going to sleep in the morning. <laughs> Absolutely, because that's what normal people do. <laughs> On the other hand, not normal. Not by any stretch of the imagination. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think, because I start leaving. I say start leaving because I'm taking the shuttle. And pfft, last year that took over an hour and a half to get to the airport. Due to their F-ups. Not, not through traffic or anything. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I start leaving at 10 a.m., so it's not like I've got a lot of shopping time to get in. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. I've just got to be able to get back here in time to catch the shuttle to spend two hours in the shuttle. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so I think. Was that all we had to talk about? I'm pretty sure so, yeah. What are you planning on doing once I go home? Okay, so Sydney Museum, um, the one with the weird dinosaur head hanging out the window. 
There's a dinosaur head hanging out the window. There is a dinosaur head hanging out the window. Have you seen the one outside the Brisbane one? Like its head goes Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Sort of like that, but it's just the head out the window. Nice. (laughs) Yeah, fun. Um, There's a pretty big cathedral around there, so I'm probably heading to that as well. Possibly the art gallery. Um, And we're considering, and by where, I mean I'm considering (laughs) um, Sea Life, the... um, the one that's down near the... Yeah, Dull- Dulling Harbour. Yeah. Um, so basically... So we saw that last time, but we didn't go in. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, probably those things and possibly going to Newtown if there's time. I tell you what, if if we get invited back next year, hint, hint, um, I want to take a few days and I want to go to Taronga. Oh, that would be pretty amazing. Because I went there when I was a kid, but I don't remember anything except for the giraffes. Because hmm. I can remember the giraffes, but that's it. I was yeah. really, really young. Oh, it sounds good. But that's about it. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you to Hatchet for having us. <gasps> it was a pretty amazing night. We really, really enjoyed it. And obviously, if possible, we will be coming back. We're glad you're doing it yes. once every year now. Please invite us back. We love you. <laughs> <laughs> your books. Uh, yeah, the, book, the books are good. Yeah. The books are really good. Okay, everyone. We will see you... Hopefully, hopefully we don't leave it a year, but you know, if it takes a year, we'll see you next year. (laughs) Bye! Bye! Hi, my name's Sophie. I'm an author and a painter currently based on the northern beaches in Sydney. I also happen to have bipolar one, and in being here with you sharing my experiences, I want to encourage all of you to talk about mental health, because when we open the conversation, we're saving lives. This is my first talk about my book, so I'm a bit nervous, and please bear with me if I lose my train of thought. So I've written a memoir about my experiences with mental illness. It's called Running Like China, and will be published on Tuesday of next week. It is the story of how I sank to the seabed, how I drowned, and how I surfaced to breathe once more. It's my story of not only learning to live with bipolar, but also thriving in spite of it. I'm hoping that my book will inspire hope and resilience for those going through similar plights to what I did, and that it will give comfort and support. More importantly, I want it to enlighten and inform and educate the loved ones of those who are struggling. It's for the mums, the peers, the teachers, anyone and everyone who is struggling who is struggling to understand and to empathize. Right, so I'm gonna read you a little bit of the book from when I started to we'll edit that bit out. <laughs> <laughs> they don't need to know that we know.